Thus, we understand the governor's focus on having students career and college ready. We understand the premise behind Race to the Top and its focus on effective teachers and school leaders and use of data and improving low performing schools and appropriate curriculum standards and assessment. So if we are preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist and technologies that have yet to be invented in order to solve problems we don't know are problems yet, how do we prepare them? President Obama, February 2010, said, because economic progress and educational achievement go hand in hand, educating every American student to graduate prepared for college and success in a new workforce is a national imperative. Meeting this challenge requires that state standards reflect the level of teaching and learning needed for students to graduate, ready for success in college and careers. In fact, he said in his State of Union message, we need a Sputnik moment. So I turned to my two esteemed panelists. We scoured the countryside to see if we could find people who had all the answers. And we found them. In the presence of Leslie Winter, who is the Executive Director for Z. Smith Reynolds Foundation, and Dale Whitworth, who is Comptroller and Senior Vice President of Golden Correct. And I put together a couple of questions for them, and by the way, if there's enough time, if someone has a burning question, we might let you ask it. Here are the questions. What is the value and role of K-12 public education? And the second part of it is, how do we generate support for our plan to reform public schools? So, I'm going to start with you, Leslie. So, I'm just going to answer that first question now, right? Sure. Okay. So, I want to say that when we in this room, uh, we education thought leaders and um, education practitioners think about the purpose of public education these days, we tend to think of it as we need a strong public education system to transform and revitalize the economy of the state. But when people who study these kinds of things look at what the public thinks is the purpose of public education, almost exclusively and almost uniformly, the public thinks about education in terms of its individual benefit for individual kids, not in terms of its collective benefit. So the public thinks of public education as the way that my kid or my grandkid or my neighbor's kid is going to have a chance to get ahead in life. This very individual benefit of public education. And I think that if you think of the purpose of education as having this almost exclusively individual benefit with parents in a kind of consumer role, that leads to a very different kind of policy choices you might make. So thinking about that, I decided that I needed to try to understand, and I'm going to share with you a little of what I've learned, about why is it in, that we in this state have consistently invested in public education, and why do we continue to do that? And there really are four public collective reasons for public education. One goes back to Thomas Jefferson, who understood that without a well-educated citizenry, you could not sustain democracy. So early quotes from Thomas Jefferson say, if you're worried about democracy, the answer to that is to educate the public. The, the second reason goes back, that I found goes back to the early 1800s when they understood that you needed education to produce good citizens and to uh, maintain the social order. Now, the social order they wanted to maintain is not one that many of us believe in, but it was a focus on a communal good of a strong community that, that they were focused on. It wasn't until the late 1800s when the South was trying to move out of this pre-war agrarian economy into a manufacturing economy that they thought of public education as necessary to produce the workers and leaders for a manufacturing and commercial economy. And then later, kind 
about the beginning of the 20th century as the South was clearly lagging behind.